Looking back, I saw that for my whole conscious life I had not understood either myself or my strivings. What had seemed for so long to be beneficial now turned out in actuality to be fatal, and I had been striving to go in the opposite direction to that which was truly necessary for me. In the intoxication of youthful success, I had felt myself to be infallible, and I was therefore cruel. In the surfeit of power, I was a murderer and an oppressor. In my most evil moments, I was convinced that I was doing good, and I was well supplied with systematic arguments. And it was only when I lay there on the rotting prison straw that I sensed within myself the first stirrings of good. But just as the waves knock the inexperienced swimmer off his feet and toss him back onto the shore, so was I painfully tossed back on dry land by the blows of misfortune. And it was only because of this that I was able to travel the right path. What I carried away from my prison years on my bent back, which nearly broke beneath its load, was this essential experience, how a human being becomes evil and how good. Gradually, it was disclosed to me that the line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor between classes, nor between political parties either, but right through every human heart and through all human hearts. This line shifts inside us with the years, and even in the best of all hearts, there remains an unapproved small corner of evil. And even within hearts overwhelmed by evil, one small bridgehead of good is retained. Since then, I have come to understand the truth of all the religions. They struggle with the evil inside a human being, every human being. It's impossible to completely expel evil from the world, but it's possible to constrict it within each person. I have also come to understand the falsehood of all revolutions in history. They destroy only contemporary carriers of evil, and also, out of haste, the carriers of good as well. And they then take to themselves as their heritage the actual evil itself, magnified still more. When I think of the heartlessness of bureaucrats or cruelty of executioners, I remember myself in my captain's shoulder boards in the forward march of my battery through East Prussia, and I say, so were we any better? There's nothing that so assists the awakening of omniscience within us as insistent thoughts about one's own transgressions, errors, and mistakes.